Microsoft just released a paper that will make us question everything we think we know about the ability of other large language models like ChatGPT4. This paper introduced a new language model named Orca, which is basically kinda an optimization of the larger models. Orca is born out of research directed at enhancing the performance of smaller language models based on the output of large foundation models. And what Microsoft is proposing here is similar to how computer processors shrank over the years to wearables, while becoming even more efficient and powerful than the larger ones. When we consider the parameter size of the other large language models and this one, we'll notice a large gap between them. I mean, ChatGPT4 is said to have over a trillion parameters, while Orca, as you see from the abstract here, only has 13 billion parameters. And this simply translates to lesser computing resources and therefore far cheaper to run. This new AI Orca is a really big deal for Microsoft, and in case you don't understand that yet, they will be able to get more users on the platform with this new program when it launches eventually. And they plan to make this an open source program, so other models can be built and trained off this model. This is more like the approach we're seeing from Meta, as they've been making a lot of open source programs to find their way into the market via the other programs they'll be embedded in. Normally, smaller models with smaller parameter sizes tend to be terrible at reasoning and performing other tasks, which makes it totally understandable for people to depend more on larger models like the ChatGPT program. Orca, on the other hand, is offering something a lot more different from the conventional smaller models. And the performance is really insane. When you look through the abstract, we have this part that explains the performance of the AI against different benchmarks, and it says, Orca surpasses conventional state-of-the-art instruction tune models such as Vicuna 13B by more than 100% in complex zero-shot reasoning benchmarks like Big Bench Hard, BBH, and 42% on AGVOL. Moreover, Orca reaches parity with ChatGPT on the BBH benchmark and shows competitive performance, four points gap with optimized system message in professional and academic examinations like the SAT, LSAT, GRE, and GMAT, both in zero-shot settings without COT while trailing behind GPT-4. This is really interesting, and in case you don't understand what the zero-shot setting is, it's basically a method adopted in machine learning where models are made to respond to tasks that have not been seen during training. And this is basically testing what the performance of the AI will be outside a controlled environment where anything can be thrown at it. And for a better understanding of the benchmark performances of Orca against other LLMs like Llama, Alpaca, Vicuna, Bard, and even ChatGPT, we have these charts here and you can really see that Orca beats most of the others for most of the tests. And in the areas where the others come out on top, it's basically by very small margins. And this becomes even more interesting when you look at the charts on professional and academic performances. We see right here that Orca was able to reach a score quite close to ChatGPT. There's no doubt Microsoft is gunning for the skies with this program. As I did mention earlier, one of the major selling points of Orca will be easy accessibility and efficiency. The smaller size means that Orca will be able to run on smaller devices, which I think is a path Google is seeking to follow too, and this might even mean that these programs can be run offline. And being able to run these programs offline opens up a whole new door of possibilities, but I'll get back to this later on in the video. Orca is really exceptional because it's able to trace the step-by-step -step process that it takes to achieve its responses, making it really efficient in tackling some tasks that models that size will practically fumble on. And this is possible because it's trained on the trace explanations that ChatGPT provides while tackling queries. The advantages of this process are that Orca can tackle complex tasks, generate more accurate answers, and can explain its own reasoning processes. The idea behind Orca is basically amazing. And this is like the brainchild of GPT-4, only the limitations are overcome to a reasonable extent in this new model. There are instances where GPT-4 and other models were surprisingly unable to answer questions based on basic reasoning. And this might make you wonder how they're able to complete complex tasks when they're unable to handle these. Common sense is not so common. The common sense is not so common. Yi Jin Choi opened her TED talk with this quote from Circa in a bid to show that very shocking limitations that some of these AI programs have. 
And the scariest thing that Yi Jin did point out in this short presentation is that we're at the mercy of big tech companies. Like, we're basically expected to take whatever these companies tell us about these LLMs because the resources required to truly dissect these things and actually study them is only something that they can afford. And I know that with published papers on different AI models comes that section with a litany of limitations that seem almost the same every time. But we only gain access to the things that they want us to see. It's really disturbing when you think about it like that. And Yi Jin goes ahead to point out these really disturbing yet laughable facts about the current LLMs, in this case GPT-4, with its over a trillion parameters. The first prompt, as you can see here, asks, I left five clothes to dry out in the sun. It took them five hours to dry completely. How long would it take to dry 30 clothes? And the response is it would take 30 hours to dry 30 clothes. And it gets even worse with the second example that you can see right now on your screen. These are basically things that we will take for granted that these AI systems can do, but it seems something isn't right. And bombarding unstable foundations with more and more data will prove to be really dangerous in the long run. That's why scaling down to models like Orca is suitable in this situation for easier understanding and regulation. It's almost like the bigger language models were just designed for complex answers only. But I personally think since they're meant to be natural language models, then they should be able to attend to common natural language problems if they're to be tagged as efficient. Orca offers some new capabilities. With all these abilities, coupled with the small size, we're looking at having one powerful AI model that can be able to run on smaller devices like smartphones. And if you paid attention to one of our videos where we discussed the crazy new announcement Google had at the recent I.O. conference, you'll see that they're moving in this direction with Palm 2. In this video, Google announced that Palm 2 will be coming in four sizes, Gecko, Otter, Bison, and Unicorn, with the last being the largest. And the idea is that Gecko, which is in fact the smallest of them all, will be able to run on mobile devices and offline too. It will be really crazy if Microsoft is able to achieve the same thing with Orca. And despite these impressive features that we have in Orca, there's still certain limitations that we're expected to see with this AI, which include data bias, lack of contextual understanding, lack of transparency, and hallucinations amongst others. And honestly, the list, as you can see here, seems much like what we have been told about other models. This might owe to the fact that Orca is in fact an offshoot of one of those models and is bound to inherit some of the limitations. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems this is becoming a tradition for these tech companies to publish these limitations and risks without actually saying how they can be mitigated or the efforts being made to fix or regulate them. Hopefully this doesn't come back to bite us. Going further, Orca incorporates a feature called explanation tuning, which enables it to build on these large resources made available by GPT in the step-by-step -step processing of information. And you can certainly be able to get Orca to perform specific tasks just by saying maybe, make me a note on this or describe this and still get amazing results. But making use of the resources made available by explanation tuning will get Orca to reveal its own thought process and internal logic similar to what you get in GPT-4. Something that will usually be a hassle for other smaller models. And in case this still sounds vague, take a look at this section in the paper here titled System Messages. And this is a subsection under explanation tuning. It says right here, we handcraft a total of 16 system messages designed to evoke different kinds of response from the LFM. This allows us to train Orca to generate long and short answers, follow guidelines, instructions, and format, generate creative content as well as address information seeking queries, and most importantly, generate explanations and step-by-step -step reasoning for the responses as prompted. And this is immediately followed by a series of queries that are processed by the system message, you are an AI assistant. These are meant to incorporate some kind of transparency in the whole processing of queries and let the user into a more elaborate response that reveals the thought process of Orca, and is likely to mitigate against such responses as demonstrated by Yi Jin Choi. Everything about this paper sounds great, and I can begin to imagine having these smaller models that can operate without the need to be connected to central servers, being integrated into physical robots. I'm sure this will make the running process a lot faster and more efficient since information can be processed in an instant. Microsoft did great with this and we look forward to the rollout. We'll see you all in the next video.